price of freedom is death. We're coming to get our check. Black first, my brothers and my sisters, welcome to the Afro Elite YouTube channel. I'm your host, Afro Elite. Before we get started, please make sure that you guys hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, share button, all that stuff, because we're on our way to 10K and everything that you guys do helps. So thank you guys very much. Now, this story is probably going to make you mad like it made me mad. is is very disturbing, but this is about um, a black child, a minor, a child who was racially terrorized and victimized. And we know it's racial. They said the N-word. They called him racial epithet. So we know this is a racist attack. We know for a fact that this is a racist attack done by an adult, a legal adult, a white legal adult terrorist, white supremacist, um, to a child. So we're going to look into this. We're going to give our commentary on it. And we're going to speak on this story that's really being underreported. Copyright disclaimer, under section 107 of the Copyright Act 1976, allowances made for fair use for purposes such as criticism, comment, news reporting, teaching, scholarship, and research. Fair use is a use permitted by copyright statute that might otherwise be infringing. Nonprofit, educational, or personal use tips the balance in favor of fair use. We have just learned an 18-year-old is wanted for reportedly beating, kidnapping, and robbing a 16-year-old boy uh, who goes to Hampton High School. It happened off campus. And tonight, parents are disturbed after a now-deleted video of the beating was airdropped to students this week. Teresa Bowles has been digging into this for days. She is live now in the studio with more on who police are looking for. Okay, some important things that we have to keep note of that the black kid was 16 years old, still a minor. He is 18 years old. He is a legal adult. Look at his face. Do you honestly believe this is the first time he's ever committed a crime or done anything illegal at all? This is clearly not the first time, and that's just by looking at his face. Now, when the police talk about proactive policing and when they talk about stop and frisk and more police on the streets, they're not talking about doing that to prevent people like him from anything. People like him get to walk around, face tatted up, committing a whole bunch of crimes, get let go. He's 18 years old. He looks like a walking time bomb right here and nobody's doing anything, and nobody would have done anything in this situation had uh, uh, the video not been airdropped and leaked to the internet. Yeah, Hampton Police just confirmed that there are warrants out for the arrest of 18-year-old William Kyle Latham. He is wanted for kidnapping and false imprisonment. Right now, there is a warrant for his arrest, and since this video includes minors that I'm about to show, we are blurring it out, but still, without seeing it, I'll warn you that it is still very, very disturbing. This is a story you'll only see on 11 Alive. Kidnapping and false imprisonment. I didn't hear a hate crime. I'm, no, I'm not hearing they're charging him with a hate crime. Um, assault with a deadly weapon, uh, kidnapping of a minor, assault of a minor, um, I'm not, there's a whole lot of different crimes. There's a whole lot of different things that if the races were reversed, if this was an 18 year old black kid and a white, uh, teen who's 16 years old, they would have threw every single charge they could have possibly conceived at that black kid. But his white is like, okay, well, kidnapping and un unjust imprisonment. That's, that's all they're going to charge him with. What's behind this blur effect is beyond terrifying. An alleged Hampton High School student is shown being beaten until he bleeds and called racial slurs with multiple people around. Next, the 16-year-old appears to urinate on himself. Then the suspect puts a gun in the victim's mouth. Lastly, the teen is left in a closet, luckily alive. Here is what the police are doing. They're going to get the main guy uh, who's in charge of all of this. They're going to get him and they're going to let all of the other people who are clearly in the video. There are multiple white people in the video, but they're going to uh, go after one. Notice they're only talking about charging and looking for one of the people in the video. Not everybody else in the video, not the person recording, not the other people around. OK, not the people who knew about this. Had it been black, this would have been a Rico charge, a gang injunction. Everybody in a mama would have been arrested. Everybody would be under investigation. The whole block would be hot. 
had this been black, okay? But when it's white, they have to make a white sacrifice only because the video was leaked. So they're only going to go after the main guy. Okay, we'll, we'll go after him and say we done something. No, every single person in that video needs to be charged with a hate crime, needs to be charged with kidnapping of a minor, assault with a deadly weapon, um, uh, terrorism, all, all of that stuff, okay? endangerment of a lot all of that stuff everybody in that video and everybody who knew about it because who is this airdrop to you know so clearly if that person was airdropped and they got leaked online that person at least knew about it so everybody who knew about this situation needs to be charged or at the very least, under investigation. It really kind of made me teary up. It just really uh, shook me up. It makes you want to to do something and, uh, something about this. Ashley Keaton has a niece and nephew that go to Hampton High. They and thousands of others watch the video in awe. They're going to put a lot of fear in a lot of young kids. We can't even stand up to bullies. I don't remember bullies being this dangerous back then. If they're that dangerous, what could they do in the school? No, no, you're doing the wrong thing by calling this person a bully. This person was not a bully. I don't even know if this person was a damn student in the school. They said the black kid was a student in the school. We don't know if this person, this, first off, he's 18. So if he is a student in the school, he's not about to be, you know, or at least he's held back. So we don't even know if this person is a student in the school. And this didn't happen at the school. This happened off campus. All right. So by calling this person a bully, you're really watering the situation down. This person didn't shove him in a locker and take his lunch money. This person didn't knock his books out of his hand or throw paper airplanes at the back of his head in the classroom. It's some typical bully stuff. That's not what this person is doing. OK, this person put a gun in the kid's mouth. That's not no man. These bullies are really getting out of hand. That's not what this is. This person is a white supremacist terrorist, all right? That's what he needs to be referred to as, not a bully. You're doing bad by calling him a bully because you're watering this down. Had this kid um, been white and the uh, assaulter been uh, black, they would not be using the word bully, okay? They'd be using thug, terrorist, criminal. They would be using all of those other words. Henry County Schools shared this message they sent to parents, quote, we are currently working with law enforcement to investigate an inappropriate airdrop message that surfaced at our school. As a reminder, distribution of inappropriate materials is never permitted and will be dealt with accordingly. And DeKalb Police sent this statement, quote, we are investigating. However, due to the sensitivity of the subject and the ongoing investigation, we are unable to release anything at this time. Do y'all know how easy it is to find out who airdropped something? The airdrop damn near in and of its own has its own receipt and its own tracing to it. There's no way in the world they were like, man, we just cannot find where this video came from. That This is the police trying to play stupid. This is the police trying to play incompetent. Anytime it's time to... Uh, do justice for a black person the police act like man there's just nothing we can do the technology that we have is just so ancient these people make it seem like this the wild wild west and they don't even know what a phone is and they can't trace anything and all of these police detectives are new to the force that's what they make it seem like they know it's super easy to trace who got that video where that video has gone to and who sent the video where the original video came from they would be able to do that if immediately it does not take long and if they did and even if they didn't want to say the details of the investigation they could say well we do have the person where the video came from and the person is a suspect or we have a suspect or the person's in custody they're saying oh we're trying we're trying our very very best we just can't find anybody it's just terrible they're lying. A representative from Hampton Police tells 11 Alive that a 16-year-old was kidnapped, taken to DeKalb County, beat up, and robbed. All agencies were tight-lipped about where the teen went to school, but these students' loved ones had a lot to say. What can we implement to keep things like this from happening to make uh, my nieces and nephews safe. Several parents told me off camera that they were afraid to speak out for fear of retaliation, that they hadn't felt the school is safe for a while, and some are disappointed in the administration. It's very obvious that this was not the first time a situation like this has occurred. Now, maybe not to this extreme, but situations like this don't just happen out of the blue, okay? This isn't the first time a situation like this has occurred. 
Okay, stuff like this builds up and it builds up and it builds up until now it's this breaking point. If the parents are saying they have not felt safe, they have not felt that their children were safe for a while, that means that black kids have been racially terrorized for a minute without any sort of consequences or anything being done to solve that. So the, my thing is on to the parents and the parents saying, man, we're scared. We don't know what to do. This is why the parents need to step up, because as a parent, you shouldn't be putting your kid in this environment. All right. I understand maybe you can't send your kid to a different school. If you can't send your kid to a different school, then you need to change the school. Your presence there needs to change the school. All that, man, we're, we've been complaining and we just don't know what to say. And it's just all bad. This is the parents fault. OK, because the parents are acting like cowards right now, in my opinion. Keaton says he has sympathy for the student, but worries what the bullies could have gone through to make them do something like this. Whatever page this was on through Instagram, I said, repent, bro. God is real. Turn to him, please, before you ruin your life. And now you can see it's really the adults, the black adults in this situation who enable stuff like this. And the black kids have to face the damn consequences for the cowardice of the black adults, okay? For the shameless cowardice of the black adults. This man is sitting up there talking about, I don't know what they could have gone through to drive them into this situation. If the races were reversed, I swear to God, not a single white parent would have said that about a black kid. You don't ever, ever, ever see a white parent say that when a black kid does anything. Well, I just don't know what type of environment he got raised in. It's it's always the black people who are like, well, we don't know what drove him to that. Now, if this was a black kid who did that to another black kid, they wouldn't be saying that. But because this is a white, well, he's not a kid. This is a white adult who did that to a black kid. He's like, well, I mean, what was his childhood like? Did he have breakfast that morning? He might have had a flat tire. Might have been stressed out. I mean, he needs to repent to God because we don't understand what he's going through and he's getting led towards a dark path and he might just need a hug he might just need a hug we don't understand this is why this stuff is happening because you as the black adults are enabling that type of environment Parents also told me that the students are planning peaceful protests and walkouts in response. Police are asking anyone who sees or knows the suspect, William Kyle Latham, also known as KY, to call Hampton Police or 911. Oh, see, that's the adults enabling this. This is the adults enabling that. Because if this was me and that was my kid, or if that was just a kid, ain't no peace except some rest in peace. That's going to be the only time anybody's talking about some peace is when folks is laying down the rest because stuff like this when you talk about oh well, we got to have a peaceful protest and stuff like that that enables them calling them bullies saying that man maybe they had a bad day maybe their dad didn't show up to their soccer game when they were seven years old all of that stuff enables them had this been black they wouldn't even be talking about no peace they'd be saying oh we need more police stricter crimes this 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 see the, one of the problems, I'm going to be very honest, one of the problems is with these adults, when black kids do stuff to other black kids, there's no mercy, there is no grace, there is no forgiveness, there is no he had a bad childhood, there is no nothing. It's you need to be punished when it's black. Black people don't have a problem when it comes to punishing other black people like them. Those type of black people don't. But when the uh, assaulter is white, then it's like, oh, well, hold on. There's still some good in his heart and he still can be rehabilitated and be a positive person in society. All we got to do is change him and teach him. And maybe he didn't have a hug. Maybe he needs some fresh baked cookies or even Burger King like, like Dylan Roof. This is the problem with that because that type of behavior enables stuff like this. So all those adults who are talking about, I'm scared and I just want to do a peaceful protest, but I'm probably not going to be there because I'm scared. That stuff enables stuff like this. So this is really on the administrative, uh, their fault. This is on the police's fault because they can do something if they really, really wanted to. Um, this is on the parents to a degree because the parents enable that type of behavior because I'm pretty sure the kids were sitting up there going to the parents like, uh, mom, dad, they're beating me up. They're calling me the N-word. They're beating me up. They're terrorizing me every day. They're like, well, just pr just pray that they leave you alone and try to keep your head down and try to keep your head low and, you know, just, just mind your business and hopefully everybody leave you alone. This is the type of stuff that enables that type of behavior. 
So all of them need to be checked. The police know everybody involved in it. It's not like they were uh, being wear a mask or anything like that. They can clearly see the video. They can clearly trace the phone's uh, airdrop, and they can clearly find out who sent it to who. These kids, they're 18 years old, 16, around that age, years old, teenagers, whatever. So they're going to snitch on each other. No, None of them are going to take the fall for another person. The second you get them in that interrogation room, they're going to snitch on everybody. This is why the police don't want to pick anybody up because they know when the police pick one of them up, they're going to uh, spill the beans on everybody involved. And the police don't want to get everybody involved. They only want to get that one person to say, hey, we did something, though. You can't say we didn't do anything. We did something. We got the main guy in charge. We did it. OK, leave us alone. That's what they want to happen. So that's why they're not picking up any other suspects that they know were in the video or at least involved in that situation. I'm going to be keeping up with the situation. Um, the police aren't going to do it. The news isn't going to do it. I'm going to be keeping up with the situation. If there's an update or anything like that, I will let you guys know that um, in the future. But I want to know what you guys think about this in the comments section below. What do you think the parents should do? What do you think the school should do? What do you think the police should do? What do you think about the total situation in general? This not being a hate crime? Then this is the type of stuff that we talk about when they use the hate crime numbers. A lot of the stuff that happens to us, because mind you, this is very clearly a hate crime. This is very, very clearly a hate crime that's not being reported as a hate crime. Now, had this been another group of people, oh my God, this be the biggest hate crime, national news, biggest hate crime. But when it's us, they are like, eh, kidnapping, eh, and that's it. That's all they're doing, okay? This is a hate crime that does not get reported, all right? So what do you guys think about that? I want to know in the comment section below. Also, you should be following me on my various social media pages, which is Afro Elite on Instagram and then The Afro Elite on Twitter. Also, please do not forget to hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, hit that share button, um, leave a comment, all of that, because all of that helps the reach and the growth of the channel. And we're on our way to 10K. And for everything that you guys do, I sincerely appreciate it. Thank you so very much. Now, with that being said, my brothers and sisters, be one salute to every single last one of you all. And you all have a good one.